word of God is so important. God made us. You know that. He made us. And we were made from God's word. Our physical bodies came from the dust of the ground. And so, our physical bodies must remain connected to the dust of the ground. Every living thing must remain connected to its source. Plants were made from the ground, they must remain connected to the ground. They cannot live in the air. Fishes were made from water, so they live in water. They cannot live on the ground. Your human spirit came from God, from God's spirit, and must remain connected. To God's Spirit. So every living thing must remain connected to its source. And if you remain connected to the Spirit of God, you will live a triumphant life. The triumphant life belongs to every one of us. To enjoy it, you must first believe that there is such a life. There is such a life. You must first believe that there is such a life. And then you follow the principles of that life. The law of faith. And we got to talking about the law of faith and arrived at the 17th verse of the fourth chapter of the book of Romans. Would you turn there now? The fourth chapter of the book of Romans. Tell somebody anything is possible. Anything is possible. Hallelujah. Anything is possible. possible. You know one thing I'm so glad about? You have a Bible for yourself. So whatever I'm sharing with you, you can go back on your own and research it and find out whether or not it's true. Is that okay? Isn't that wonderful? I think that's great. I think we're blessed. Yes, you can always look it up yourself. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Say this with me. I'm going to live a great life. I said, say this with me. I'm going to live a great life. Now, you say it again, and this time, I want you to mean it with all your heart and say, I'm going to live a great life. One moment, then say this, and I will live free of sickness, free of infirmities, and live prosperously in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that?
It is so important that you make your faith declaration about your life. I've told you, if you don't say anything, something will still happen. The trouble is, it's what you don't want that will happen. All right, now I want to make another point that's important, just like the one I just said. You see, if you have a garden and you do not sow any seeds in your garden, you don't plant anything in the garden, something will still grow. What are you going to have? Weeds. Weeds. Now, the, the, the lives of many Christians are like that. They don't realize that they have something to do about their lives. So they think whatever will be, will be. And the only things that will be are the things they don't want. Because it's not God's responsibility to do something about your life because he's already done something by sending Jesus and sending the Holy Ghost. It's our responsibility now to do something with what he has given to us. You must say that you will live a great life. You must say it if you're going to have it. You must. If you don't say it, you can't have it. Sickness comes to those who do not say that they will continually live in health. Those who do not continually proclaim divine health are the ones who welcome sickness. Sickness has to come to them. They're like the weeds growing in the garden. Yes, you didn't do anything wrong. It's like the man, he didn't sow anything in his garden. He would say, I didn't sow the wrong seeds. Where did they come from? Yes. Where did they come from? If you had sowed the right thing, you have the right results. Now you refuse to sow the, the right thing. They will come from the ground. Why? Because according to the law of God, plants were commanded to come out of the soil. So if you don't plant anything, something will come out of it. Hallelujah. Okay, so we are in Romans chapter number 4 and from the 17th verse. Hallelujah. You are refusing arthritis. You don't want arthritis in your body, no strokes, no chest pains, no headaches, no migraines. Are you hearing me? No diabetes, no heart trouble, no blood infection. You will not have any of that. I refuse to be sick. Hallelujah. Verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God. Now, you're going to underline this part. He says, even God. Say, God. God. Good. God who quickeneth the dead. That means makes alive the dead. He brings the dead to life. God who quickeneth the dead. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. He calls things that do not exist as though they already existed. That is God's way. He calls things that be not as though they were. He said to Abraham, you can see that in the first part of the verse. He, called, he said to Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations. And the man had no child. And yet God said to him, I have made you 
a father of many nations. He didn't say, I shall make you. He said, I have made you so. When the man as yet had no child, God said, I have made you a father. He calls things that be not as though they were. He didn't say, I will make you a father. He said, I have made you a father. It was up to the man now to do something about it. God is saying to you, I have made you a success. I have made you healthy and strong. I have made you prosperous. I have made you priests and kings. The law of faith. The law of faith. He calls things that be not as though they were. He gives life to the dead. In anything, to him, nothing is too late. He brings life to the dead. To him, nothing is too late. Anything is possible. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. And it tells us about Abraham here that God said to him, I have made thee a father of many nations. So he continues his story about Abraham, which he was already talking about in the previous verses. So in the 18th verse, still talking about Abraham, he said, who against hope? Now, I want you to notice this. Abraham believed the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that be not as though they were. He tells us the kind of God that Abraham believed in. Is a God who gives life to the dead and calls things that do not exist as though they already existed. Abraham believed in that kind of God. That's the God he trusted in. The God who gives life to the dead. Now look at it. Who against hope in other words, when the situation had become hopeless, naturally hopeless, he believed in hope. <laughs> you know the meaning of that statement? Let me just tell you, very simple. It's so powerful. Against hope, he believed in hope. He's not saying that he believed that this was his hope and so he believed in his hope no against hope he believed in hope meaning that he created substance out of his hope and that's exactly what bible says faith is it is the sub substance of things hoped for he hoped for it and so he believed in hope so he created, that's what the Bible says, Abraham believed God. I want you to understand that he's not just talking about mental believing, especially when you understand that this was lifted from the Old Testament. And the Hebrew construction meant that Abraham made an unqualified committal to Jehovah. In other words, it was faith, not just accepting the reality of something in form of believing. No, he cast himself on Jehovah. That's faith. He had absolute confidence absolute trust in Jehovah so against hope he created substance out of his hope as far as he was concerned that which he had pictured he made positive you remember his name had been changed from Abram to Abraham father of many father of many he created 
substance out of it. He called himself the right name, father of many. He was called supposed father, assumed father. But now he called himself father of many because God said, I have made you the father of many. So he began to say, I am the father of many. He introduced himself to others as the father of many. I am father of many. As yet he had no children, but he called himself father of many. Father of many. What happened? What happened? It was based on a scripture that we read yesterday, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. He said, I believed, therefore have I spoken. You remember that night the Bible says that God brought Abraham out, you know, and asked him to look. At the time he was still called Abraham. He said, look at the stars and count them if you're able to number them. And he went out and looked. The Bible says, and he believed in the Lord. That day he believed and God said, now you're ready. From your believing, you can answer the right name. Your name is Abraham. And so he began to say, I am Abraham. So he spoke because he believed. That's what Paul said. I believed and therefore have I spoken. So I'm declaring that I am Abraham because I have believed. He wasn't trying to believe. He had come to believe. And so nobody could argue with his name. He couldn't listen to you. If you asked him, why are you calling yourself Abraham at this time? He didn't have to give you an explanation. It was impossible for him to try to convince you. He didn't it didn't matter to him that you were in the senses and he was in the spirit. So he said, I am Abraham. Abraham is my name. Father of many. He had come to believe. And the believer is a possessor. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, who against hope believed in hope? That he might become. Huh, this is wonderful. In other words, look at it. He says, that he might become. He believed in hope. That he might become. Isn't that what we read in Romans chapter 10, verse 10? With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto that he might become. He declared his faith. So he was catapulted to that position that he had seen. With the mouth, confession is made unto. You catapult yourself into that position. That you have seen in your spirit with your mouth. I told you, keep talking. Let no one stop you. Keep talking. Keep talking. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I walk in righteousness. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I walk in righteousness. See, the devil has been defeated stop trying to defeat him we don't need to defeat the devil because he's already been defeated somebody said well i'm wrestling with the devil you don't need to wrestle with the devil you have put him down there is a fight of faith now and you have to understand when the bible talks about the fight of faith and when it talks about our warfare what is this warfare what is the, this fight of faith the bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places he says we wrestle not what do you mean wrestle the word wrestle there doesn't mean that we're fighting them it's not a fight He's referring to the fight of faith, not fighting the devil. But he's talking about the demon spirits of darkness trying to sway you from the truth. And that's what the fight of faith is all about. That's what it's all about. It's not like we are engaged with satanic forces in a physical combat. It's not that way at all. We are not engaged. 
with satanic forces in the physical physical combat no when it talks about the, the the wires of the devil what does he tell us to take he says the shields of faith he didn't say take your shield he said it's the shield of faith it's not a physical shield faith is your shield you want to say faith is the shield it's not that there is a shield all right it's not talking about a shield in the realm of the spirit that is applied by faith come on come on come on are you hearing me there is no shield in the realm of the spirit that we need to take by faith and use no your faith is the shield that is why it is called the shield of faith your faith is the shield oh come on here and it says the sword of the spirit what is it he says the word of God which you proclaim which you profess which you declare which you confess and announce he says that is the sword of the spirit it's not that there is a sword in the realm of the spirit that you declare I take now in the name of Jesus the sword of the spirit uh -uh. when you speak the word of God that is the sword When you stand your ground in faith and proclaim the word in faith, that is the shield. You don't need to picture any shield and try to catch it. I confess I received the shield of faith. No, 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 no. Your faith is the shield. And let me just go to 2 Corinthians for a moment. 2 Corinthians in, in the third chapter. Did I say the third chapter? No, no. It's a tenth chapter in the third verse. Second Corinthians. The tenth chapter. Oh, we are victors in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. He says, though we walk in the flesh, that means walk in a human body. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down Casting down what? So te grisco vradala man de gisco shalahate. Casting down imaginations and every high thing, oh, 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 glory, that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, I want you to understand that this must not be taken out of context. We're going to read it in its context to begin to understand it. I'm reading from verse 1. We started from verse 3, right? Most of us know how to quote it from verse 3. Not many of us know what is connected to it from verse 1. But when you begin to read it from verse 1 and then beyond verse 5, you get to understand. All right, verse 1. Now, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence I'm based among you, but being absent, I'm bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, but with I think to be bold against some which think of us. Now, watch this. 
some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. So he's not talking about everybody. He's talking about some because he refers to some people in the church. Now you have to understand where this is all coming from. This whole thing has to be understood from 1 Corinthians. You're going to have to understand the whole subject from 1 Corinthians into 2 Corinthians to know what he's dealing with here. Now, he says, you can, you can understand that there's something wrong somewhere. There's a problem somewhere and Paul is referring to this thing. So, verse 2 again. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. He says, I'm coming to you. And I, I plan to be bold against you. But somehow, he says, I know what you think about me. That um, I'm bold when I'm away. And I'm not bold when I'm present. Say, but this time, I'm coming with boldness because I've, I've got to talk to some of you who think that we are walking according to the flesh. See, he's talking to the church. To the church in Corinth. There's an issue. There's a matter up. And he's upset about this thing. So he says, some of you think that we are walking according to the flesh. So, he goes in verse 3 to say, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Now, I'm going to tell you something about this as we go on. So, he says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but man is regard to the pulling down of strongholds, etc., etc., etc. Then, in verse 5, I want you to notice, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in readiness, or in a readiness, to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? See? You notice? He's asking them, do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, as he belongs to Christ, even so are we also Christ. We also belong to Christ. See, the man is upset about something. So when he says, we, he's not talking of everybody. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. I get you all now. You're so quiet on me now. Let me read that verse 7 into verse 8 so you see. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, uh -huh, of our authority, which the Lord had given us, for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. You see that? He's talking about our authority, which God has given to us for your edification, not for your destruction. God gave us authority for your edification. So when he said, we, us, he wasn't referring to everybody. He was talking about the leaders. And I said, you have to study from 1 Corinthians into 2 Corinthians to know what he was talking about and who he was referring to. How many of you are understanding it in context right now? Thank you. Now, this will become clearer. Go back to verse 3. He says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The word war there is Greek, stratomai. It means to lead soldiers in an expedition. It means to lead soldiers to war. So he's not talking about fighting the devil. He's talking about strategizing. So when we tell you what to do, he's saying we know what we're dealing with. We are operating from a high realm. Because we understand 
the manipulations of Satan. So he says, the authority which the Lord has given to us for your edification and not for your destruction. So the leadership that we give to you, we are given from a high realm of the spirits. Our military leadership, he's saying. Strategizing in the realm of the spirits. It's not according to the flesh. It's not according to our brains. We are not thinking it out. We're not trying to reason out with our senses. We understand these things from the realm of the spirits. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not lead and guide and strategize according to the flesh. Why? Because the weapons that we use are not man-made. That's why we have to strategize according to the spirits. We have to function according to the spirits. So when we give instructions, they are coming from the realm of the spirit because the kind of weapons that we use are not of human understanding. How, how come on here? Look at the whole army of Egypt coming against Israel. God says, Moses, stretch your hand over the water and divide it. How, how, how? The weapons of our warfare. Hey, uh. Egypt can't believe it. It can't go through their minds that the Red Sea was split wide open. They have never heard about it. They have never thought about it. They have never imagined it. And right before their eyes, the Red Sea split wide open. They couldn't believe it. Could this be God? They thought they were standing right in presence of history in the making. But they thought, well, we didn't see nobody. We only saw Moses ahead of them. So they watched the children of Israel go through. The Bible says, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Our strategies are different. The carnal ones began to say, oh God, what are we going to do? Moses, you want to destroy us? They looked at the water. They said, no way. They looked this way and that way. We can't escape. We are dead men. What they forgot was that Moses was strategizing with Almighty Jehovah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, Jehovah already introduced himself to Moses. He said, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your, your fathers knew me as El Shaddai. But I am Jehovah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to bring you out of Egypt. I'm not going to function as, as, as uh, Shaddai, but as Jehovah. I'll lead you out of bondage. I am Jehovah. Oh, come on, shout amen, somebody. The weapons of our warfare are not cannon. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hey, yeah, yeah. One of our pastors told me the other day, there was a building that they wanted for church. And the man, the agent who was in charge of it said, no way, I can't give it to you. He made up his mind he wasn't going to give it to them. Well, he tried to make it very difficult. And several times they had a meeting with him. No way. So what? The last time they came to the building to take a look at it, he said they got together, he and his brethren, and they began to pray. They began to speak in other tongues. This man who was upset with them was going away while they was praying. And then he looked at them. He couldn't move any further. Are you hearing me? That day he made up his mind. He was going to give them the property. Can you shout hallelujah? The weapons of our warfare. Arnold Kana, hallelujah. We are strategizing in the realm of the spirits. Don't worry about your imaginations of fear. He says these weapons are mighty through God to pull down strongholds, to cast down imaginations and bring down every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Can you shout amen somebody? Woo! 
We are strategizing in the realm of the spirits. And you know, when we get into that war room and we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, we 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 pray in the Holy Ghost. Go in the God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joshua learned it from Moses. When it was time to take Jericho, Joshua knew he couldn't sit down with the elders of Israel to be planning on how to take Jericho. He couldn't look for the oldest men in Israel to say, how are we going to take Jericho? No, he couldn't count how many swords they had to know how to take Jericho. He was waiting for something. The same God that appeared to Moses. And before long, the angel of the Lord stood before Joshua and introduced himself and said, now here is the strategy. Here is the strategy. Hallelujah. It's not for the swords. He said, the swords will wait. All those weapons will have to wait. No swords. No shields, no spears, no staves. They all have to wait. So what are we going to do? He said, here is the strategy. Because the weapons are not man-made. We're going to bring down these wars. He said, you're going to go around the wars one time each day for seven days. On the seventh day, you're going to go around seven times. And each time you're going around, nobody talking. At the last time, the seventh time of the seventh day, he said, you blow the trumpets and you shout. So will I go. when you shout he said these walls that you see before you they will fall down flat 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 oh glory to God I don't know the kind of walls you are facing in your life maybe the walls of cancer maybe the wars of financial impossibilities maybe there are wars in your business maybe there are wars in your academics but i'm telling you we are using the weapons of our warfare they are not canal and the wars who come down flat oh hallelujah glory to god Woo -hoo! Oh, Glory to God. Sit down. Tell somebody anything is possible. Tell three people anything is possible. Anything is possible. Tell another three people anything is possible. Go with a guy. Anything is 
The book of Romans, Romans chapter 4. Are you in Romans chapter 4? Some of you are getting your own rhema right now. Ay, 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 ay. Hey, glory to God. Woo! Romans chapter 4. Let's get the rest of it, all right? You are going to be so rich, so prosperous, so strong. Hallelujah. Huh. Hallelujah. Sit down. Verse 18, Romans chapter 4. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. He believed in hope to become what he saw. How did he do it? I told you yesterday about different kinds of faith little faith great faith or much faith weak faith and strong faith there can be a lot of faith that is weak and we said for weak faith to become strong you've got to exercise it all right now verse 19 and be not weak in faith weak faith is faith that is not being exercised faith that is not being used that guy who says i know but i know but you don't have to say it out i know we are blessed but must we tell everybody we've got to tell everybody I know you're rich, but must you say it out? You know what the devil does to many people? He says, don't say anything because the manifestation is not in your life. So don't say it until you can really prove it. Uh-uh! You've got to say it! You've got to say it! You've got to say it! that lying devil don't believe him he tells you not to say it until you have it the truth is you have it and until you say it you may not see it so you've got to say it somebody said i used to say it but when i didn't see the reality i stopped saying it you made a mistake that's when you should have said it more hallelujah look at this and being not weak in faith he considered hey, uh, he considered not his own body Ooh. brothers and sisters this is faith i told you the other night faith is not the denial of facts we do not deny the fact but we deny the fact the ability or authority to control the circumstances of our existence that's exactly what abraham did the bible says his body was as good as dead as far as giving birth to children was concerned but he considered not his body he didn't deny the fact that his body was old 
but it denied his body the ability to control his believing. Hallelujah. Be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body. I was listening the other day to one of our programs and, uh, and she gave a testimony about a, a certain business, uh, a certain interview that she went for. It was already over. They had selected the people they wanted to select. And she said, uh-uh. When I was praying, I got Rema to go there. She got there. They said they have already done the selection. They didn't send her an invitation letter for the interview. They already invited those they wanted. She was not shortlisted. She was not invited. She heard about it and went there. When she got there, because she considered not the letter. In spite of the fact that they had already selected those they wanted, it was already final. She considered not their reports. They said, all right, come inside. They took her inside. She did her own interview. Several people sat down to interview her. When they were through, they canceled the ones they had selected before. <laughs> and gave it to her. Be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. Look at it. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not consider his own body, which was as good as dead. Neither did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. Oh, hallelujah. But, look at this. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Unbelief makes you stagger. Unbelief makes you stagger. Here you are, you're praying and believing. And then you raise your, uh, your head and you see, it looks like, man, this thing is getting worse. You are staggering now. You're staggering. The Bible says he refused to consider the facts. He had the facts. He refused to consider the facts. He set aside the facts. He staggered not at the promise of God. He had God's promise. So he held on to God's promise. That's what we're doing in our ministry. We're holding on to God's promise. Hallelujah. We're holding on to God's promise. He said it. And we're holding on to it. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. The Bible says, but was strong in faith, giving glory, giving glory. How do you give glory? Let me explain to you. You know, in our lives, we need to look for the glory of God and give him the glory. Stop looking for your sickness. Listen, if you didn't hear anything tonight, hear this one. Stop looking for your sickness. Look for your healing. Listen to me. You know, in life, you feel, hey, mm -hmm. I better find out what this is. You're looking for your sickness. Look for your healing. Many don't look for their healing. If you have had problems in your body, 
or problems in your life can you recognize that that swelling that growth is reducing the Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory how do you give glory every time he looked at his wife and said honey you are looking fresher He said, I can see the change. Your body is changing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I can see the changes. Can I tell you something? You know, some people, they have a pregnancy. And every time they lose the pregnancy, you know, they say, oh, I saw blood. Oh, you are looking for the wrong thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stop looking for the wrong thing. Don't let fear get a hold of you. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He recognized the changes. You know, Elijah was waiting for God. There was a sound and God was not there. He was waiting for him. Everything that could bring God didn't bring God. Where was God? God was in the still, small voice. God didn't show up in the way he expected him to show up. That child that has not been able to walk when you woke up in the morning didn't you notice that his legs had moved and changed position you didn't observe when you should have been giving glory to God this leg moved I saw it it moved thank you Jesus the Bible says Abraham believed in a hope to become with the mouth, confession is made unto. You want to move from point A to point B. You are going to have to speak yourself to that point. You're going to have to talk yourself to strength. You're going to have to talk yourself to that place that you want to be in. They refuse to promote you. Forget it. Promotion doesn't come from the east or west or from the south. It comes from God. So what are you going to do? Talk yourself to the top. Tell somebody, use your mouth. Tell the other person, use your mouth. Use your mouth. Use your mouth. The miracle is in 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 your mouth. Hallelujah. Don't look. Hold on. Don't look for your sickness. Look for your healing. Every day, give him glory. Say, I see that I'm getting better. I see that I'm getting better. I'm getting stronger. I see my progress. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Maybe you are a trader. Why don't you see your progress? He staggered not at the promise of God. 
There was an opportunity to stagger. But he refused. He staggered not. But was strong in faith. He was strong in faith. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. I can see the changes. I can see the changes. The rashes are leaving my body. I can see the changes. I can see the changes. I can see the changes. My finances are increasing. I can see the changes. Hallelujah. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Hey. Listen to this. I want you all. I want you all to read verse 20. Verse 20. Want to go. But was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Verse 21. And being fully persuaded. That what he had promised. He was able also to perform. Can you shout amen somebody. Hey, hey glory to God. My God is able. I said, My God is able. My God is able. I am fully persuaded. I refuse to stagger. I refuse to stagger. My God is able. I am fully persuaded. I refuse to stagger. And so I'm strong in faith. I see my progress. I see my healing. I see my prosperity. I see my promotion. I see, 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 I see. Somebody shout hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. I have the ability of God in me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The anointing is upon me. Go with a God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. The anointing. Woo -woo. I'm making progress. I'm moving forward. Glory to God. I'm getting greater and greater by the day. I'm getting greater and greater by the day. I'm getting greater and greater by the day. Come and shout amen, somebody. Woo -woo. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and speak the words of faith.